Hi, Bruce Adolph here with episode 14. There's only one person in my neighborhood who knows I'm really Batman. Actually, I'm not Batman. But don't try to tell that to Bobby the Fishman on 85th Street and Broadway. It started as a joke, but he has been greeting me with, Hey, superhero, how you doing? And Batman, how's the Batmobile? Several times a week for years now. And there is no sign of it letting up. How did this begin? One day, years ago, I walked into Bobby's fish market and said, I'd like 20 shrimp, please. Bobby said, 20, exactly. Actually, I said, feeling playful, make it 19 shrimp, please. 19? Why 19? asked Bobby. Because we have 20 people coming over for dinner and we don't like one of them, I quipped, not even expecting to say that. Well, Bobby laughed much harder than the joke warranted, in my opinion. But from then on, whenever I came into his shop, Bobby would ask me, You need 19 shrimp? So I would usually come up with a new twist on that, such as, Today we need two pounds of salmon and one shrimp. Why one shrimp? Well, we invited that guy we don't like over again, but he's been nicer, so we want to make it up to him. Well, Bobby found everything I said incredibly funny, and he would laugh so much that I began to feel I had to have something funny to say in order to go to the fish market or I'd ruin his day. But he thought everything I said was funny no matter what, so it was easy to entertain him. One day, after I bought some carefully calculated number of shrimp and said something that cracked him up, Bobby said, you know, you're a funny guy. I'd like to call you by your name. What's your name? Everything was about to change. I said, Bruce, my name is Bruce. Bobby said, Bruce, like, like Bruce Wayne? Are you Batman? My fatal mistake was that I answered, shh, you guessed it. Yes, I am Batman. I thought he'd laugh and that would be the end of it. Okay, Batman here in my store. Hey, he yelled to some other customers in the store. Guess who I got here? You know who this guy is? He's Batman. People smiled quizzically, looked at me, and like most New Yorkers would do, nodded hello to Batman and continued shopping. We have fish once or twice a week at our place, and so I would stop by Bobby's Market that often, expecting that the superhero thing would fade away. But it only intensified, and he became more aggressive in his introducing Batman to various customers. On more than one occasion, someone I had not seen for a long time would come to buy fish in the shop and Bobby would make sure that they knew I was a superhero in disguise. One such incident that stays with me was when Richard Drew, the photographer who took the famous falling man photo on 9-11, came into Bobby's market. Richard and I knew each other at one time because our children went to school together. But this was one of those chance reunions that might have been a good opportunity for us to just catch up and talk about the kids. But as soon as he saw me talking to Richard, Bobby called out, You know who you're talking to there? Hey, you know who that is? You know who you're talking to? Richard said, Well, yes, I do. But Bobby continued at high volume, He's Batman! He's the superhero, Batman. Richard pursed his lips and arched his eyebrows, tilting his head toward me to see if I also thought I was Batman. After all, it had been about nine years since our kids were in school together. Bobby continued, tell him about the Batcave and tell him about the Batmobile. And to Richard, he directed the instruction, if you have any criminals you need punished, He's your man. He fights crime every day, right, Batman? Richard turned to leave and waved to me, whistling slightly. I haven't seen him since. I've often seen cases of mistaken identity in New York stores. I've been mistaken myself for Bob Balaban and Roberto Benini while ordering locks at Marie Sturgeon's shop. To balance these cases of mistaken identity, I should mention that I am often stopped on the street by families who recognize me as Inspector Pulse, private ear, from my family concerts at Lincoln Center. And some people have recognized my voice in restaurants, saying, Excuse me, aren't you the piano puzzler on public radio? 
good years. At Dean and DeLuca's, the high-priced gourmet shop on Broadway and Prince Street in Soho, I witnessed a beautiful moment of mistaken identity. To follow the story, you need to know about Don York. Don is a conductor and composer who was well known in the 1980s dance world, primarily because he was the conductor and music director for the Paul Taylor Dance Company. Since Paul Taylor's studio was on Broadway between Prince and Spring, in the same building which I had a loft, and because there were many dance studios in the neighborhood, due to the huge spaces that were available everywhere, Dean and DeLucas was usually flooded with dancers. Don York was often there, and so was I. Don looked a little bit like Steve Martin. Not a lot, but enough. On this particular Saturday afternoon, I was standing in the Dean and DeLuca checkout queue when I realized that standing two people in front of me was the comedian, actor, writer Steve Martin. The young woman standing between us said to him, Excuse me, are you Steve Martin? He said, Why, yes, with a charming smile. She said, I love your work, really. I mean, you are hilarious. Uh, thank you. Thank you. He was just saying that as a young female dancer, still wearing her leotard, leg warmers, and skirt from rehearsal, came over to him holding a pen and a small address book. Excuse me, she said breathlessly, but are you Don York? Steve Martin had opened his mouth to respond, but nothing came out. Then he said, who? Am I who? The dancer said, you're not Don York? Martin said, no, I'm not. Oh, sorry, she turned and melted back into the chocolate display case. When I first moved into the loft in Soho in 1980, Dean and DeLucas was not yet there. And in fact, there were very few stores anywhere in that neighborhood. The big loft space was empty except for my piano. When I was audited by the IRS around that time, an auditor actually came to my loft space to see why I deducted part of it for my work. Eyeing the piano, he said, Do you ever play the piano for fun? So transparent. Just work, I said. He said, You don't throw a party here and tinkle the ivories to entertain once in a while? Never, I told him. The piano is for making my living. It's not a hobby, and it's not just an amusement. I did use the space for concerts, but there was the problem that my opera singing parrot, Polly Rhythm, usually sang along during performances. One of the first things I needed to accomplish when I moved to Soho was to locate a place to buy bird food for Polly Rhythm, who had, at that point, been my co-tenant for 15 years. I roamed the neighborhood looking for a shop that had the kind of parrot food he liked as a supplement to all the vegetables and fruit that I gave him every day. Tucked away on a tiny street, I found a kind of general store that sold health food items for humans, a random selection of plates, bowls, silverware, and lots of coffee-related items such as grinders and stovetop espresso machines, and to my surprise, there were a few shelves of pet food. They had a few kinds of dog food and cat food, and there was... Like, there were medium-sized bags of parrot food. It didn't look that interesting, but it was there. I picked up one and examined it. And just as I was about to bring it to the cashier to ring it up, I noticed lots of bugs crawling around inside the bag. Disgusted, I simply walked back to the shelf and returned the bag and walked out of the store quickly, wanting nothing to do with the place. After a few blocks, I could tell that someone was following me. I turned around and saw the man from the shop I had just left coming toward me, staring at me with a determined look. I waited for him, and soon we were face to face. He said, his voice angry but quivering, Give me back what you took from my store! Shocked, I said, I didn't take anything from your store. He said, You stole a bag of bird food. What? He said, Open your coat. You hid it in your coat. I was not carrying any sort of backpack or anything, so my coat was the only place a stolen item could be stashed. Well, I could have simply opened my coat, but instead I said, 
your bird food had bugs in it, so I put it back on the shelf. He said, well, why don't you just open your coat and show me what you took? Something came over me, and I heard myself say, I will open my coat on one condition. If there is bird food there, I will pay double the price for it. But if there is no bird food there, you will pay me $25. He stared at me in silence. I said, if you're so sure I took it, that would follow me for five blocks like this, then what are you worried about? Do you agree to pay me $25 if there is nothing there? He said, okay, sure, open your coat. I unbuttoned my coat and held the two sides open wide, shook them and flapped them up and down like wings saying, no bird food, nothing. He said, hey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but someone told me he saw you take the bird food. And now he looked really upset. He reached for his wallet and I said, keep your $25. He turned away and jogged back to the store without turning back to look at me. Little did he know that I was not only not a thief, but I would become, one day, someone who would strike fear into the hearts of all thieves and evildoers in the city of Gotham. I would be Batman. To be continued.